Hmm. Ronnie Jones, Chairman, Louisiana Gaming Control Board. Hey, Mr. Ronnie, welcome back to Keel. How you doing today? Morning, guys. Y'all, uh, y'all struggling without air in there? Uh, somehow we'll keep our noses above water. <laughs> um, Seventeen point three billion dollars. El Dorado Gaming Resort, the whole, uh, the, whatever the official name is, yeah. by Caesars, is it, talking to people around town in the gambling business, in the gaming industry. This was something that was, in their mind, sort of on the back burner, but nobody thought it was this close. Is, is it surprising the deal was put together this quickly? How long have they been talking? You know, if, if people in the industry know that uh, El Dorado uh, was really uh, a Reno-based company that... Uh, family-run operation they they've got investments in uh, in wine country but in some cases better known for their wines in their their casinos and uh after the uh the patriarch of the family died a, a few years ago they became very aggressive in terms of acquisitions i mean you know look at look at shreveport and bozier they had one casino uh then in, within uh, about a year and a half they tripled their holdings in louisiana now with this potential uh, uh with with the merger potentially they could uh, have six properties in Louisiana. So it, I think it surprised a lot of people. The, uh, the company executives kept uh, the, the gaming regulators sort of plugged in on the progress of the negotiation. So I wasn't surprised when, it, uh, when the uh, release rolled out before the markets opened on Monday. I knew it was coming. But it did happen fairly quickly, and that's just uh, that's the nature of, uh, of the business environment. Now, you said something very interesting. You said this potential merger. I guess that's a two-part question. What steps do they have to? What steps does everyone have to go through at what levels, and what could screw this up? The, the, well, the the they're likely. I mean, they're going to. Uh, uh, they're going to end up with Caesars. I, I I say potential because, you know, I, I can't predict what's going to happen in the Shreveport and Bossier market. But I know uh, if you look back uh, at history, when uh, Penn National Gaming acquired Pinnacle. Um, last fall, I guess, the Federal Trade Commission required that they uh, divest themselves of properties in three Midwestern markets because of competitive issues. So uh, by analogy, if you look at the Shreveport and Bossier market, the, the highest uh, producing casino in Shreveport and Bossier is, uh, uh, is Horseshoe. Uh, you know, their, their year-to-date uh, adjusted gaming revenue was something like 171 million compared to El Dorado that's about at a 106 million so I, you know picking up picking up that property in addition to the track the slots at the track facility I don't know how the FTC is going to look at that I know that they will be reaching out to us and and will be part of the, the discussions but uh, it's it's hard to say what the landscape will look like with respect to casinos uh, and El Dorado uh, a year from today. Right? Is, we this, just don't know. is this unprecedented? I, I, it may be unprecedented in this market where one company would own three properties, but maybe around the country or in the region, how have other states handled situations like this or have there been situations like this? It, it's not unprecedented, but but the FTC is going is is kind of the the big dog on the block right now. I mean, they're going to be making some uh, some decisions uh, and re and perhaps requiring the newly merged uh, company uh, to to make some tough business decisions. Um, in my six years as chairman, I've neither I nor the board have had to make any decisions about uh, those competitive issues in any of the Louisiana markets. So this is kind of new territory for us, uh, and, and we're going to be reliant a lot on what the federal regulators do first before it ever gets to us. I had I had mentioned in the first segment just after 6 o'clock talking about this deal, I had said, is it beyond the realm of comprehension that in this case, casino number three buys casino number one and then sells casino number three? <laughs> it, it, anything is possible in this business. And, uh, that, you know, I've, we've seen an awful lot of movement. Uh, and fluidity in uh, in the gaming industry uh, over the last three years. I mean, there's there's been consolidation and regionalization of uh, of companies, and I expect that trend to continue. Uh, El Dorado just really kind of jumped out ahead of everybody else. The only other player uh, who was part of the discussion uh, was Tillman Fertitta, who uh, who made some overtures to Caesars. But ultimately, it was El Dorado that uh, pulled the financing together, the plan together. They're buying a a huge company. 
they're going to be an even bigger company now. But uh, but with that comes an awful lot of debt that Caesars has been carrying around for the last couple of years. Like a lot, uh, like nine billion dollars in debt, huh? Yeah, yeah. They just came out of uh, out of uh, bankruptcy. Uh, uh, we approved their plan, I guess, maybe 18 months or so ago. And uh, I remember going through the documents. An incredibly complex company with tremendous holdings, and and one of the one of their premier holdings is in the city of New Orleans. It's the land based casino, and uh, as as you know, their contract was just extended uh, this past legislative session for the promise to uh, uh, improve that property to the tune of two, about three hundred and. I think about three hundred million dollars, I believe, was was the bottom line on it. When when I don't know how you guys look at it or how the FTC, in this case, might look at it. Would the fact that one's in Shreveport and one's in Bossier have any any effect on a decision at all? I, I don't want to make any. Uh, I don't want to speculate about what they might do, but but the fact that they're merely separated by a river is probably going to be inconsequential. Louisiana Downs, bluntly speaking, the emphasis on. Horse racing, at least at Louisiana Downs, it, it, uh, it, it's, it's not the joint it once was. Let's speak bluntly. How do you think this is going to affect that, if at all? I mean, I referred to it earlier. It's a, it's a slots palace. I, I, had, I had heard several years ago that uh, Caesars was actively looking for someone to purchase that track. I mean, horse, horse racing industry is not today what it was 50 years ago or even 25 years ago. And, uh, and that's not just in Louisiana. That's, that's across the country. Uh, there are clearly challenges in the horse racing industry, and I, and I think it's the, uh, at least the approval in Louisiana of having slots at uh, racetracks that have, have kept the tracks open and viable. Uh, there's still a lot of people who love horses, a great thoroughbred industry. Uh, a lot of ancillary uh, uh, industries support that. But in terms of it being a, a gaming venue, a, uh, uh, a place where people flock to like they used to, unfortunately it's not there. I, I, I don't know what happens to, to the track, and I, and I don't want to predict. I don't have that crystal ball. Well, speaking so clearly of, it's a challenge. Speaking of your crystal ball, give us a time frame on this. I mean, it, it – it, is there any possibility uh, possibility at all the whole thing unravels and i assume the chance of that is slim so looking into that crystal ball down the line six months a year 18 months before this is all finalized i, I would say during the course of the next year we're talking about months and uh I, you know we're just in the you know this is tuesday it was announced yesterday so we uh you know we'll be meeting with uh, company executives they'll be coming in during the course of the next month to visit with us sit down lay out some preliminary plans uh we'll know more at that time but you know they have to they have to be approved in every state where El Dorado and Caesars currently operate, in, um, addition to, in addition to the FTC. The term confirmation bias has an effect. My confirmation bias, my last question, yep. my confirmation bias has an effect on my next question. <laughs> last question. Okay. Can the Louisiana legislature screw this up? <laughs> uh, well, look, Ronnie, I apologize. <laughs> so... What does the Louisiana State Legislature, the ones who have previously considered sports fantasy gambling, gaming, and sports gaming, casino sports betting, what effect, what, pro, what, what, is, their, what is their role in this process? Ordinarily, they would have no role. But if somebody uh, in the legislature uh, was of a mind next year to introduce a, a bill to, to outlaw gaming in Louisiana and prohibit riverboats, you know, <laughs> Who, who knows it's, what kind of traction that would get? I don't think that's going to happen, but the legislature can turn, you know, Sundays into Mondays. And, uh, <laughs> it's Louisiana. I, I, you <laughs> never know what's coming up next. I'm just, I'm just a lowly old regulator, okay? <laughs>